The summer of 1966 changed China forever. Chairman Mao Zedong was making his grand political comeback and Chairman Xi Jinping was a frail 13-year-old boy. That summer played out differently for both men. Mao Zedong was out swimming. He flung himself into the Yangtze River, put on a show for the cameras and the state media did the rest. One outlet wrote, the water seemed to be smiling that day. It was propaganda at its finest, the beginning of Mao's cultural revolution. But for Xi Jinping, it was the start of something horrible. His father, who used to be a close aide of Mao, was captured and beaten. His home was raided by frenzied communists. His sister died in the chaos of the Cultural Revolution. This was in 1966. 55 years have passed. Xi Jinping is not a helpless boy anymore. He's the president of China. And what does he do with all that power? Same thing that Mao did. Lead a communist cleansing, unleash cultural revolution 2.0. Make no mistake, it's already happening. Xi Jinping may not be swimming in the Yangtze, but the purge is very much on. He wants to control the government, the military, the society and the schools. He believes the party should lead all of them. And he has more or less achieved the first three, government, military and society. So now he's going after the schools. Tonight we'll tell you about the five big moves that Xi Jinping has made to capture young minds and control their path. Number one, an attack on private education in China. The Chinese state is taking over privately owned schools. No questions, no compensation, just an outright hostile takeover. At least in the last three months, 13 private schools have been taken over. What's the plan here? China has 190,000 private schools. They educate 20% of all Chinese students. Beijing does not like this, not because they hate private capital, but because private schools don't create communist minions. They promote logic, sometimes free thought. And that's kryptonite for Xi Jinping. By the end of this year, China wants less than 5% of its children in private schools. The rest will be shunned to communist incubators. Move number two, the purge on private tutoring. It was a golden goose for Beijing. The Chinese society is obsessed with academic excellence. It's a fertile market for private tutors, especially the online players. They were minting money, almost $137 billion a year. Now they've been told to stop charging for their classes. Online education should be non-profit, says Beijing. It's basically game over for this industry. This year they could end up making below $25 billion. Imagine that from $137 billion to $25. Move number three, scrapping English exam in primary school. They're starting with Shanghai. The city has cancelled English exams for elementary schools. They now have mathematics and Chinese language test. What's the justification here? Authorities are talking about reducing academic burden. But it's less about education and more about culture. English is a Western language. China sees it as a tool of capitalism. It has no place in Chinese schools. It doesn't matter if it makes Chinese students less competitive globally. It's all fair in revolution, apparently. And the question of choice, of course, is not even relevant in China. So no English is the diktat. Move number four, a ban on foreign textbooks. You could say this is an extension of the English test ban. They've started with Beijing. The city has banned foreign textbooks in primary and junior high schools. So what will children learn from? Books written, vetted and approved by the Communist Party. Might as well teach from Mao's Little Red Book. The decision challenges logic. Subjects like physics and biology, you see, don't have ideology. So what's the point in banning foreign textbooks? And don't be surprised if these homegrown books are an ode to Xi Jinping about his childhood, his legacy, his leadership. Well, knowledge can wait. Move number five. Filter history, misrepresent facts. This is happening in Hong Kong. A history textbook for sixth graders is being revised. It talks about the Chinese Civil War of 1946. What does the new book say? The Republic of China government led by Chiang Kai-shek moved to Taiwan. This is what the old book said. Now Beijing wants to change that to the Kuomintang led by Chiang Kai-shek moved to Taiwan. The idea basically is to tell the students that those who moved to Taiwan were not the Chinese government. And this is just one example. Multiple changes are being proposed. The idea is to alter facts. 
to make China look better. It's a complete massacre of history. Put together, what do you make of the situation in China and all these moves? The purge is truly underway. There are no red guards raiding houses. Instead, communist officials are raiding history. Xi Jinping's cultural revolution is a lot more sophisticated. But it's equally ruthless and sinister. The question is why now? Mao launched his revolution to stage a comeback, to reclaim his lost powers. In the process, he killed millions of his own people. What's Xi Jinping's excuse? Well, believe it or not, the new helmsman is vulnerable. There is discontent in the party, especially on his leadership style. The Communist Party constitution bans personality cult. But today, Xi is party, power and country. His fellow leaders don't appreciate that. Plus, they're tired of his combative policies. China's elite are blocked from entering Western nations. They can't get visas, thanks to Xi Jinping. This discontent comes at a crucial time for this country. In 2022, the party will hold its 20th National Congress. If his party men don't back him, what will Xi Jinping do? Who the people, specifically the next generation, control them? This cultural revolution is about expanding Xi's brand of communism, where education is good, as long as it is managed by the regime, where students are lauded as long as they hail Xi Jinping. China's new purge will scuttle innovation, or whatever they have of it in China. It will kill diversity and free thought. Children will grow up as loyal fanatics, not responsible citizens. But then again, that's the plan. This is the final frontier for Xi Jinping. He controls the army, he controls the press, he controls the Politburo. Now he wants to control the future, the children of China. But just like the original cultural revolution, this one too is doomed for failure. You cannot teach loyalty from books. You cannot create a revolution in a lab. It doesn't matter if it's from a little red book or a giant red laptop. Weon is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.